designed with you in mind. Urban Surfaces SPC Floating Floor is equipped to make your installation process fast and easy with its rapid lock clip system and adhesive-free installation. Here's how it installs. Before you begin installing, we recommend that you visit our website to read our complete installation guide, located on our Resources tab. Gather the necessary materials and tools in order to properly install your floors. You'll need a double-sided mallet, a tapping block, a utility knife, a vinyl plank cutter if you have it, knee pads, quarter-inch spacers, a pencil, flooring pull bar, and measuring tools such as a measuring tape, a level, chalk line reel, and a carpenter's square. Prior to installing, you'll want to prepare your subfloors, making sure they're level, clean, and as moisture-free as possible. Refer to our installation guide document to determine if your subfloor is appropriate for installation. When cleaning, you'll want to make sure all debris and protrusions are scraped and swept away, leaving your surface to be as spotless as possible. Then measure the deflection or curvature of the subfloor to ensure it's level within 3 16 of an inch in a 10-foot span. Subfloors should not slope either upward or downward more than half an inch per 6-foot span. If the subfloor bows upward, grind it down. If it slopes down or has holes, fill it in with a Portland-based self-leveler. To determine how much flooring is necessary for installation, you'll need to first find the area of the room by measuring the length and width of the space. Divide the area by the square feet provided on the box. With that, you'll get an estimate of how many boxes you'll need for installation. Urban Surfaces recommends to order 5 or 10% additional flooring to account for cutting waste. Once all the boxes are collected, make sure all the batch numbers match. If your batch numbers match, so will your flooring. Acclimate the box as a floating floor for 48 hours within the environment in which it's going to be installed, recommended between 65 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. To prevent alkali damage, install a non-permeable moisture vapor barrier rated for 100% RH. We suggest either having 6 mil polyethylene layered on top of the subfloor, or using Sahara and a limited moisture vapor barrier by Taylor Adhesives requiring no testing for RH or pH when applied. In the absence of a vapor barrier, moisture and pH tests are required to ensure concrete substrates are suitable for the installation per ASTM standard F710. Moisture test results must not exceed 85% RH or 8 pounds per 1,000 square feet over 24 hours. pH must result between 5 and 9 to avoid alkali damage. When installing, for the best results, we suggest sorting through multiple boxes and separating each pattern. This benefits your installation results, giving you control of the patterns for a more organic look. Walls aren't always straight. So to solve this issue of possible wall deviation, we recommend modifying this next row to go against the wall itself, which we will call the edge row. To do this, first measure off the wall no less than 3 inches on either side. Once the edge row's width is identified, snap the chalk line accordingly. Begin installing the initial row by aligning the first plank to the left side of the longest wall along the chalk line. To attach the next plank, simply join the clips to one another and carefully secure them with a mallet. To score or cut through a plank to finish off a row, make sure to measure the width from the edge you'll be cutting. With a utility knife, score the mark until deep enough to snap the plank and make another additional cut if desired on the padded side for a cleaner break. If available, we recommend using our vinyl plank cutter for a quicker and cleaner result. To attach the long sides, insert the plank at a 45 degree angle, sliding it over to the short end, then lower it into place. Using a tapping block, tap along the length of the planks to properly engage the surrounding clips. Once the first few rows have been completed, make sure the planks are aligned with the chalk line. Then we can go ahead and work on the edge row. Lay out your planks for the edge row on top of the initial row, serving as a guide, making sure that they're perfectly aligned. To measure the cuts for this row, we recommend modifying a loose plank by shaving off the groove, which will allow for an accurate tracing of the wall's edge. Add your quarter inch spacers to the modified plank, pushing it against the wall. Then trace down the edge row. Make sure the planks are still aligned with the chalk line as you're tracing. Once this entire row is outlined, 
you can now individually cut these pieces along the tracings to complete the edge row. From here, simply place the planks in and secure them with a flooring pull bar. Add the quarter inch spacers as installation continues and secure the seams with a mallet. With these steps, repeat the same process of cutting and placing until the full installation is complete. To disengage, make sure the locks are secure and simply slide the planks out without lifting the planks. Any angle beyond its design may fracture the clip. From there, remove the spacers, trim the barriers if applicable, add your baseboards, clean its surface, and the installation of Urban Surfaces SPC floating floor is complete. We thank you for choosing Urban Surfaces as your modern flooring solution. For more information, visit our website at urbansurfaces.com, follow us on social media, or call us at 1-800-492-8722. We look forward to hearing from you.